Okay, continuing on with section 3.1 on basic probability rules. We wanted to go over these definitions here. Sample space, outcome, and event. A sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. For example, if you flip two coins, there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails. If you uh, have a deck of 52 cards, depending on how you set up the experiment, you could say there are four possible outcomes, heart, clubs, spades, or diamonds. Or you could say there are 13 outcomes, an ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, or king. Or you could say there are 52 outcomes. It all depends on how the problem is worded. An outcome is just one result. Like if you flip a coin, it could land heads, that's a result, or tail, that's a result. If you're looking at uh, suits on a deck of cards, there are four possible outcomes, heart, club, spade, or diamond, so each one is a result. An event is a subset of the sample space. You, usually it's the event or, uh, usually an event is the outcome or outcomes that you're calculating a probability for. For example, you might be calculating the probability, what's the probability you get two heads when you flip three coins? Okay, that's more than one outcome. Or it could be, what's the probability you get three heads on three coins? That's exactly one outcome. Um, but you need to write the sample space usually to be able to answer these questions, at least in chapter three. So here we go. With example one, it says, write out the sample space for the number of ways one coin can land. And the sample space just consists of these two, heads, H for heads, or T for tail. So there are two outcomes in this uh, sample space. So the sample space consists of heads and tails. Each one is an outcome. Then it might ask you a probability. What is the probability of flipping a coin and it landing heads? Well, each of these have a probability of 50% chance of it happening. So the probability that it lands heads is 1 out of 2 or 50%. If somebody says write the sample space for the way two coins can land, right here, the way, write out the sample space for the way two coins can land. Then what you would do first is write the sample space for one coin twice. So the way one coin could land is heads, tails, and I wrote it again, heads, tails. Now the second coin could either land tails, so I'll put a tails here and a tails here, or it could land heads, heads, heads. And now I have the the sample space for the way that two coins could land. They could land heads, tails, 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 heads, heads, or tails, heads. Now some of you might say, well, isn't heads, tails the same as tails, heads? Well, it is if order doesn't matter. But at this point, we're looking at order mattering. So in other words, we're saying it, the first coin landed heads and the second one landed tails. And this one is the first one landed tails and the second one landed heads. So we're looking at these as being different and it's actually easier to look at these the way we are now because it keeps all the probabilities the same. The probability that two coins land exactly, heads on the first coin and tails on the second coin is one-fourth. This one's one-fourth, this one's one-fourth, and this one's one-fourth. In other words, all of them have a 25% chance of happening. So once you list the sample space, which consists of these four outcomes, each one of these here is an outcome, like for example, heads, heads, is one outcome. Then you can answer some probability questions. So let me scroll down a little bit so we can see all these. And this question says, what is the probability of flipping two coins and they land with one head? Well, let's see. We know that the total number of ways that two coins could land is four. And they land with one head would be this one right here, that is heads, tails, and this one right here, tails, heads. This one, heads, heads, would not be counted because when you say that they land with one head, that's understood that that means exactly one head. So the probability of flipping two coins and they land with one head is two out of four, which would reduce to one half, or in other words, whoop, running out of room there. But this is the same as, let me just give myself a little bit more room here real quick. So this is the same as one half, or in other words, 50%. And that would be the answer to that problem. Let's check out the next one here. It says, what is the probability of flipping two coins and they land with at least one head? Well, at least one head means one head or more. So that would count this one, this one, and this one, 
The only one that would not be counted is the tails tails. So the answer to this problem would be 3 out of 4, which is 75%. And the next problem says, what is the probability of flipping two coins and they land with at most one head? Well, at most one head means one head or less. At most one head means one head or less. Okay. Let's go through this again here. Let's do the top one again. What is the probability that two coins land with at least one head? At least one head means one head or more. At most one head means one head or less. So one head or less. That would count this one because it has one head. That would count this one because it has one head. And it would count this one since it has no heads. So at most one head, the answer to this would also be 75% because it would be 3 out of 4. If you jump it up to 3 coins, then the best thing to do is write out the sample space for two coins twice, just like we did earlier. We wrote out the sample space for one coin twice and then added tails to the first and heads to the second. Then to get the sample space for three coins, write out the sample space for two coins twice. So here's the sample space for two coins right here. And here's the sample space for two coins again right here. To all of these for the third coin, I'm going to add a tail to each of these. And to all of these, I'm going to add a head to each of these. And that would give me the eight different ways that three coins could land. So there are eight outcomes in this sample space. Then you could answer the same type of questions we had up above. We could ask, answer, for example, what would be the probability of uh, you flipping three coins and they land with two heads. Well, that means exactly two heads. So that would be this one, heads, heads, tails, this one, head, tails, heads, and this one, tails, heads, heads. So there would be three out of the total number of outcomes, which is eight. So three out of eight. If we said what would be the probability of at most, well, let's do at least, at least two heads, then that would be here's one with two heads, Here's one with two heads. Here's one with two heads. And if you say at least two heads, that means two heads or more. So that would include this one, which would give you four out of eight or one half. And if you said at most two heads, that would be two heads or less. Two heads or less. So that would be this one, because it has one head. This one, no heads. This one, because it has two heads. This one would count. This one would count. This one would count. And this one would count. The only one that wouldn't count is this one. Because if you say at most two heads, that's meaning two heads or less. The easier way to do that problem is to think of, well, what's the probability that we don't get two heads? Well, the only way we could not get at most two heads is if we got three heads. So that's one out of eight. So the probability of at most two heads must be one minus one out of eight or these right here, which would be 7 out of 8. So the probability of most two heads would be 7 out of 8. Looking at these, we can see a little pattern here. The number of outcomes for one coin flipped is 2. For two coins flipped, the number of outcomes is 4. For three coins flipped, the number of outcomes is 8. So how many outcomes would there be in a sample space if you flip four coins? Well, I think you get the pattern 2, 4, 8. This one would be 16. How many if you flip 10 coins? Well, what you might realize after a while is that there's a pattern going on, and that is that the number of outcomes for these coin problems is equal to 2 raised to the n power, where n is the number of coins flipped. For example, how many outcomes were there for three coins? Three coins. Well, if you put 3 in here, for n, you get 2 to the third, which is 8. How many for 4 coins flip? 16, because 2 to the fourth is 16. How many for 10 coins? We'll just take 2 and raise it to the tenth power, and you would get 1,024, and that would be the answer to that problem. So that's some basic probability for you, and when we get uh, on the next video, we'll be going over both sections, 3, 2, and 3, 3 combined, and that's uh, compound events. We'll do that in the next video.